could we automatically build flow diagrams or build order of execution diagrams? Because clearly that's the holy grail. If you could, you could take my existing flows and document them for me, could we do that? <laughs> I mean, the, the short answer is uh, yes. The slightly longer answer is, is we're working on it. Um, do not ask me for any uh, delivery dates. Uh, this is, I, <laughs> we, we're working on it. And I'll, that's the only thing I'll say. Everyone has probably heard about Well Architected from Salesforce and the new diagram framework. So why has Elements now built a modeling tool so we can draw those diagrams? Well, quite a few reasons, actually. Uh, for one, uh, we've always felt, ever since Well Architected uh, was conceived and people started promoting it, that it fits with our own value proposition so well. We've been talking about building the right thing, uh, planning and designing up front, and, and Well Architected in slightly different words is, is all about that. So. Uh, before we even necessarily knew what it meant, uh, we were very excited about the, the general message. Uh, that turned into a, a, a partnership with Salesforce Architects team. Uh, and that's when they requested that we actually uh, partner with them and build those uh, Salesforce, support Salesforce diagramming framework uh, in Elements. Other than that, the, the other reason is, is it's almost natural for us to do so. Um, our focus historically has been on business process uh, diagramming, understanding the end user journey and what is it that the business really wants to achieve from a step-by-step -step kind of perspective. Whereas the architecture diagrams, uh, whether that's high-level system landscapes or very detailed entity relationship diagrams, data models, they're very much still part of the same picture. They're just telling a different story. Whereas your business process diagrams describe what your end users do or wish to do, your architecture diagrams fundamentally explain how your systems are or should be put together, how the data flows through them, which is not the same as you know, what users or employees do step by step. Um, so it was almost natural for us to go into that direction. Six years ago, Savary had a YouTube channel with over 600,000 subscribers called Roskimni Polichitsny, which is Polish for political dilemmas. But fortunately for you and for the Salesforce ecosystem, he decided to pursue a career in technology He's now the VP of Product Management for Elements.Cloud, as he says he's building the coolest products for the Salesforce ecosystem in the coolest company. And it's very difficult to disagree with him. People are, are already got tools to draw diagrams, whether it's Visio, PowerPoint, Google's Lucidchart. So why would you draw your diagrams in Elements? Well, Elements is not a diagramming tool in a traditional sense. It's actually a tool where all of your assets are interrelated to each other. When I mean by what I mean by assets is, you know, think from the perspective of, of the change lifecycle, your design documentation, your planned changes, stories, tasks, you know, whatever. Uh, finally, your metadata components. All of those assets, all of those things can be related to each other in elements. So you can actually look at a component, uh, let's say a flow or an object, a field, list view, anything in your Salesforce org and understand instantly because it's linked directly to the documentation you've put together in the past and the, the tickets that were implemented, you understand why it's there why it was put together, who put it together, when it was done, why it was done the way it was done, and vice versa. You can, you can understand whether you look from the ticket perspective, system perspective, documentation perspective, you can always understand how it relates to everything else in your system landscape. Okay, so this is about yet more important documentation so you can make changes faster because you can understand the impact of making a change. So uh, 
clearly you've been using it internally. So can you give me an example of how that would work? Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, and one is from just this morning. Um, so we are retiring one system called Intercom, uh, and we're introducing a new system called Gainsight uh, to supercharge our customer support and onboarding. And one of the challenges we uh, faced is, well, how do we integrate Gainsight, which actually is two separate products, Gainsight PX and CS, and Salesforce? And uh, fundamentally, we needed to understand all three systems. Well, all three systems have the concept of a contact or, or the user and of the account. But what we weren't particularly sure of is, is how would we tie them together? Uh, because there are some subtle differences between uh, what data we capture and even how do we understand contact or account between those systems. Uh, so what we did, uh, we put up our metadata dictionaries for Salesforce uh, and actually for our own uh, application. And we looked at what attributes do we store for the users and for quote accounts. We then put those as attributes on our boxes on the screen. And we had a brainstorming session. We thought, okay, which attributes should we use as the unique identifiers across the systems that will make most sense? Um, Hang on, you just said you used the diagramming as a brainstorming tool. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah, but we but, but we didn't didn't just you know put random thoughts on the on the board. We actually went to our metadata dictionaries, Salesforce, but we also, you know, Salesforce is the one we do automatically, but we do curate manually metadata dictionaries for our other systems, Gainsight, uh, CSPX, even our own application. So we looked into the relevant objects, we checked what physical attributes do we store and then we put those into our diagram boxes and now we went okay now we have a full picture now let's start brainstorming let's see which one which of these attributes across all these different boxes seem similar enough or recurring enough that they could be used as that single unifying identifier across multiple systems so does that mean you, you simply used it for diagramming? You, because earlier on you said there were connections. So how would you have connected that diagram back to other things inside other documentation? Well, on one screen we, or with one browser tab, we had our metadata dictionaries. Uh, on another screen or browser tab, we had our diagrams opened. So we could see or look at how our systems are actually put together and identify the attributes we want. But, you know, we could copy references to those components in one screen, then go to our diagrams and just through context menu, link them with like two clicks to those boxes. So we already know, okay, that's, you know, that, that relationship is there. If anyone ever checks uh, any one of those components or goes to Salesforce, let's say, wants to change something, an account object, open our browser extension in context and setup, they will be able to find link to that specific diagram. And once we've decided at the end of a brainstorming session, which attributes we need and want, which actually we don't care about or we don't need, and how the integration, how the data will flow between those three systems, we then went a step further because it was a brainstorming session, was also a planning session. So then again, through context menu, we just raised uh, stories. So we said, okay, we need to capture this attribute. We need to configure uh, integration to accept this attribute and link it to that attribute in another system, yada, yada, yada. So so the brainstorming session actually finished with, if, if you think where, where we, and it took us, funny enough, like 10 or 15 minutes, mind you. Uh, you know, we, we started with separate metadata dictionary, boxes on the screen, and in 15 minutes we had a diagram that was explaining how we plan to build it with links to the components that we can always find, whether in Salesforce or in Elements. And we've ended up with a list of tactical stories, which already were sent to developers uh, after that meeting with, OK, this is what you need to do, and this is why you need to do it. And if you have any questions, here's a diagram we've just, we've just created. So it's planning. You then got to the point of design. And actually, now you've handed it to developers. But then you've got ongoing documentation. So if you ever come back, you can always see what what changes were made. Okay, so that that sounds very detailed. But what have, how does that relate to say the the higher level IT architecture you've got? 
oh uh, well that's the beauty of it. it 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 ties to it through hierarchy so uh, you know in our case we have our it landscape so that's a high level picture of you know every box is one of the systems that we kind of draw how they relate to each other but because you can create hierarchical diagrams and elements if we want to capture well i want to learn a bit more about what happens inside let's say this system or you know here is salesforce and make which is our middleware integration tool i can see a relationship but i actually want to understand more about what's happening between those two systems you can from that diagram that high level system landscape drill further down to a child diagram where you capture more detail and 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 on and on and on you go so what what i was describing to you a moment ago when we were you know looking at those uh, uh, objects across three different systems and looking at specific fields we were way way down you we were down you know in the detail but the way this this works from from in a sense the the architect journey we started with knowing okay we are going to retire this system we're going to put this system in that was level one and then we went okay well there are some diagrams below those boxes that we just moved around or, or planning to delete well, let's let's go in there let's see what what else what else is there so so even though we started by simply looking at one diagram because of how elements is put together we we, we just had no no escape but to keep investigating all the diagrams below and updating them as we go so that means it's not a whole bunch of just disparate diagrams oh, the, the connections mean that you actually if you make a change you understand what else you need to change in context oh absolutely so what i said before that uh, you know you can relate all the assets to each other and i mentioned changes tickets and metadata components of systems and diagrams and yes you can create easily relationships between those three but but the other very cool thing is that diagrams themselves can relate to each other so rather than creating you know tens or hundreds potentially in a very large organization separate diagrams which often by the way overlap in um the systems they reference or or even the automations or processes they they describe you you can have it all nicely tied together so if you go i'm going to change this you will see oh there's something else out there or here that is linked to my diagram that i can explore and that's how you will discover oh there are more diagrams that oh i need to look at and understand so you launch uh, functionality and then end users use it in ways you never expected. So what surprised you? Two words, flow diagrams. Flow diagrams? Well, okay. Yeah, so, so what we didn't foresee coming was a lot of architects started using our diagramming tool uh, immediately to start designing the logic of their flows, Salesforce flows. Now, we, we, we helped with that because uh, alongside standard Salesforce diagram notation and iconography, based on popular demand and requests from our end users, we've also added uh, flow iconography. So you can create boxes and, and make them fundamentally feature the image of like the re record update element or decision you know, and, and they're all available in the Lightning Style Guide uh, as, as default icons. Um, we just thought it's going to be cool and we didn't think twice about it. And we just didn't foresee, you know, how it would just take off. It, it feels like people were in, uh, there was a huge, huge gap out there in the market uh, for something that helped people really design their flows up front. Um, it became viral to be honest, uh, as far as I can see. Well, I mean, that's not unexpected because Flow is now a very powerful development tool. It's not just a little bit of drag and drop bit of automation. And we've done some other experts react sessions where people talk about the importance of thinking like an architect when you're designing a flow. So Sandy Zellner or uh, Andy Utkan, who've talked about you've got to document your flows, think about what, not just and how a flow works, but the, the fault paths and uh, how to test it. So, so it's not surprising that, that there's a need for documentation. Yeah, but I think what, what we didn't foresee was you can clearly, and if you follow some of the flow experts out there, 
they've been saying for years, you need to document and design the logic of your flow before you build it. But in practice, it meant that people were using very basic BPMN flowchart type diagrams, a decision diamond, and, you know, I'm going to do this and do that. And as a very simplistic or simplified, not simplistic, simplified picture of what your flow is going to do, that might be very, very good. But translating the, those those shapes, you know, decision diamond and, and then an action, then I'm going to do this, this doesn't necessarily translate one-to-one -to, -one to which elements you're going to use and uh, the, the logic and restrictions and conditions of what you can do with every element block of your flow is, is more complex than that. So the, the, even if you were designing uh, those flowchart diagrams as a foundation for your flows, there was still significant level of detail missing uh, between your design and an actual execution. Now, with the flow iconography in our architecture diagrams, you can go as far as to design almost the exact skeleton of your flow. Uh, down to every block you're planning to use, which is great if you're if you want to collaborate with with other people on the team. If you want your senior architect or someone senior on the team to just review it and and give you some pointers before you go on and build it. Hang on. So does that mean that you can in a flow diagram you can add shapes but then connect them to the metadata item that's being impacted? So actually, are we building? ongoing documentation again well that absolutely but actually i think what's what's more exciting in this and in, in the flow use case is uh, the collaboration so what what we've even done internally is uh, and not just for salesforce flows for automations in other systems as well we you know we were brainstorming or someone was designing and then leaving sticky notes on the on the canvas explaining well this won't work because this or actually i know this looks doesn't look good but we had to do it this way because there are some restrictions in this system so so it's not just a, a diagram but it can be a very useful collaboration tool for why why we did it the way we did it especially if at first glance it might not seem as necessarily the best most straightforward solution so the other thing i've heard people talking about is the idea of order of execution which again is really important if you're not a a developer, you've not you not really thought this through, but order of execution. So that that's a diagram I've seen that that people get excited about. So uh, I think over the last year uh, there were a lot of diagrams circulating online showing how order of execution works in theory in Salesforce. Now, what our own team started doing, uh, you know, what and this is another thing we haven't actually foreseen that surprised us. Um, documenting your flows or your automations in quite a lot of detail, especially before you build them or as you plan to update them, uh, that's one. And as soon as people started doing that and our own admin team started doing that, the next almost, it seems, natural step was, well, if this flow is calling another flow, as demonstrated by this block with the flow icon, well, I would like to understand then what... What, what that flow does. And now in here we are doing a call out to some external API or actually the trigger is there is an external integration that calls in and triggers something, then, you know, triggers triggers something else. I, I would really like to understand how that external automation works. How, you know, what triggers that? So one day I go into our system landscape, I'm navigating through our Salesforce, uh, Salesforce service cloud uh, diagrams. And I've discovered a lot of boxes and I, I kept navigating down to each one and I see very detailed documentation of, of the order of execution and logic, which starts in, you know, system all the way twice removed from Salesforce, moves through Salesforce, and then how kind of different things trigger within Salesforce. I have to, you know, I was very impressed with what our, what our team put together. Looking forward could we automatically build flow diagrams or build order of execution diagrams? Because clearly that's the holy grail. If you could, you could take my existing flows and document them for me, could we do that? 
<laughs> I mean, the, the short answer is uh, yes. The slightly longer answer is, is we're working on it. Um, do not ask me for any uh, delivery dates. Uh, this is I. <laughs> We're working on it, and that's the only thing I'll say. But yes, we've we've discovered. Um, well, it's very good that you should design flows before you build them, but we know from like few thousand orgs we we've synced or we keep syncing every day that there are a lot of orgs out there that have a lot and a lot of flows and other automations, and based from of on what we've heard from our customers. It's not like they've documented any of those for the most part. Um, so it might be a bit daunting to start now when you have that much documentation debt uh, behind you. Uh, so yeah, we are looking into how we could actually resolve that problem and, and automatically draw uh, flow diagrams. We are contemplating how we should or could uh, even take it a step further and document or visualize the orders of execution. Yes, that's uh, sort of sort of things we think about these days.